Yo, yo, Anthony in St. Reefer, Xavier, what's going on, my brothers? I'm over here bored, man. You know how to go live. Have to. <laughs> Oscar, look, my bro, already started messing around, man. Had to give me the idea, bro. Clax, Chai Town. Kino Reefer. So yeah, I was talking to Oscar earlier. Uh, that's insane, Reefer. Um, and I was talking about adding. I was thinking of adding another light to the nano tank to this one right here. So I got one pixie dirty right now. But then he came out with a better idea of adding. Since I got four of those um, Pixie 30s, so I'm gonna add three to this one. Yeah, it's gonna be a little overkill. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I can make it look like like the Lion Appropriate Reefer guy in his Nano. Or he had in his Nano. So, uh, here we go, the dog. But, um, yeah, so the plan is to put the two on the outside blues and then the middle one with some white on it for a couple hours. Number seven, good luck, guy. So, yeah, that's my plan. So I already started working on it. Let me put the headphones so the bug don't be that loud. Excuse, excuse the noise. So I got the two pixies right there. The two pixies right there, and then this one, but, right? I was going to do something crazy. And, well, it's probably going to be like that anyway at the end. So I got to shoot an arm over here, going this way. So then I can mount the light. But instead of me creating like a T, so I can mount all three. This light has the screws in each corner. So all I got to do is basically is screw them all together so I just got to find the attachment for there boom and they're gonna be all working together so I think that's the best idea that I could come up for that the reason why I don't put them in their own hanging bracket or hanging mount is because this glass is really thin and guy man I don't want this to crack <laughs> so that's one of the plans I got for this. Like I said, I already started doing some ideas. We'll see if that will work. If not, then we go back to the drawing board and we go from there and try something new. But for now, that's the way I'm going. This is like an L shape just coming from the back. But I got to make it steady so once I put the weight on it, it'll be wobbling I mean, right now it's good but that L that I put down there is no good so I got a better one I do have a better one here this steel so this one is better but I think it just touched the tank so that's not gonna work but that's that's a, an idea I got right now so if, is it gonna work we'll see but like I say the two in the size is gonna be blue so that way I'm going to get more light in the corners. 
and the middle light is still going to be blue but with the uh, channel 4 which has the uv has the whites and other like the reds the greens so that way i set this one up to like five hours a day and then the other two it's going to spread the whole tank so it's going to be good i think it's going to be good and we go from there on that and i need it because this side is a little bit you know it's still getting lit up but i got the ghanis here now so probably i'll be able to put more corals in the corners now those in the back they're not doing so great since they're not getting that much light and i know the sps is gonna love more part in there so that's gonna be good we'll see we'll see how it goes we'll see so over here it ain't much going on i know i was supposed to do a stream yesterday i, I forgot either i choose one day instagram one day youtube i think yesterday was instagram or yesterday was youtube today was instagram i don't know all I know is I didn't go to work today, so I'm well rested, ready for tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. But here, like I said, not much going on. Just watching things thrive, grow, um, color up. Can't complain. Uh, like I said, I did move the Ghanis. The Ghanis was right here. I still got one left here that's not opening too much because there's too much flow in this tank. So that... I don't know what I'm planning to do with that arch right there, what I'm going to place there, we'll see. Um, look at my cleaner goby. So we'll see what we're going to do with that arch or find a better um, place for that arch. For now, I do have to move some things. I think I, I you know, like, it's the first time I'm keeping SPS and, and learning placement and all that, so... I got all these too close to each other, especially the little one I put there. That's just a little piece that fell from that one, and it's already encrusted to the rock, so now I gotta cut that rock out of there. I mean, this one I can still move it if I want to, but this one is growing like crazy. I think that's gonna be more like a table. I don't know. You know, I don't know nothing about acro, so. But, it's that that's a big one. That one is 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 big. It's growing everywhere. And then the garf, I, I can easy move right now if I want to. Um, that one can stay there. This one still got one pile of alive, so it's gonna stay there until that pile of dies. If it's gonna die, I put a purple stylo over there. Um, it's doing okay. I mean, it's adjusting to the light and all that, so we'll see. Let's give it like a month or so and see how, how it's going. This one is still looking good. Now you guys can appreciate the purple polyps on it. Look at that. That acro came from being brown to looking this gorgeous now. A lot of growth in the bottom, so that's good. This one... Look at that movement. Looking beautiful. Looking beautiful. Can't complain. The digi's almost touching now. They almost there. They're gonna hug each other. It's like they about to shake hands. They looking good too. Nice color on them. This one, the base is already going growing over the glue, so that's good. Things are doing good. That's that's all I can say. Things are doing good. Can't complain. This joint is already encrusted to the glass. I can move it out of there. So that's another thing that is going on in there. So I'm still happy. They're doing really good also. I got to move this tool out of there. They got to come out of there. I got plans for that. Look at the bubble algae on top of that rock. Hmm. Huh. I just noticed that. Look at it. Ah. Caw -caw. I need a I need an emerald crack. Mm-hmm. 
The frost king is looking really nice over there. Always happy. Yeah, guys. So that's that's what I'm being today. <laughs> After talking to Oscar, you know, went down to the basement, grabbed the lights. I was doing some testing here, see how it goes. Gunnies are looking happy, better than in the 40. Less flow in this tank, so more gentle. It's another one back there, but you see the hermit crap working. So it's pissed right now. But look at this one. This one now is more happier than before. It's hard to see. It's at the lens. So I'm missing my glasses, guys. I don't know. <laughs> Let me not even bring that subject because I get pissed when I talk about it. Oh, another thing. I think you guys saw it in the stream last time. He's still down there. I did put him in the tank, but he kept being aggressive. So I'm punishing him a little more. See, he learned his lesson. Or learn a lesson out of that. So we'll see. He never been aggressive. But I think since I got this light cycle. That I've been running now for a while. And the tank been running stable. Um, they starting to spawn. Or get in that freaky freaky zone. So my dance holes being acting like that. The other two white clowns being acting like that. So of course he was going to act like that too. That's my female now, that little white one over there. Where she at? She's fat. Look at that chunky. She look like a great white. Look at that. But, that's her boyfriend over there too, so. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I don't know. I don't know if I should put it in here. But the thing is, the firefish are so happy in this tank. Um, I don't want nobody to be aggressive to them. Because then they just go hiding. That's their home right there. They go hiding. They don't come out. And I don't want that to happen. They happy out. So, Fletcher, what's going on? I don't know, I don't know. Also, I don't want them to start hosting the anemone and then the anemone don't like it or for some reason start moving around. That's another thing I'm trying to avoid right now. Until, I don't know, until I figure out things with the tank. You know, it's going to stay the way it is, but you never know. You never know. You see now, just with a conversation with my boy, I started making changes. So, chimp. What's going on, my brother? Welcome, welcome. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. But, yeah, that's what I'm going to try with this light. Remove those screws. Um, find something that I can attach both together. Boom, boom. Making three. This joint is going to be heavy. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So... And just give it that little settings and see how how they how it goes, because this light, of course, they don't run with Wi-Fi. They don't got no type of controller. You gotta control the settings on it yourself with the remote. So, since I got three, I could use two in blue and one in white, and run the white one for for at least four or five hours, and then let the blue take care of the rest of the day. So. We'll see, we'll see. I gotta find a spot to the Sumber Starburst Chalice back there. No, no, it's not an all in one. This is uh, a 14 gallon freshwater aquan. Um, it just made for fresh water. I drilled it myself. And then it's running with this system over here. And it's running with this one. But it's a 14 gallons. 14 gallons aqua on. A lot of DIY on it. I um, 
the silicone calm and clear I added the black one on it thank you thank you I added the black one I did this mesh screen you know with your screen doors or uh, windows and just an idea to hang it I use what they use for the cabinets in the kitchen for the shelf inside the cabinets so I just drill a hole in the plastic part and just stick that in there and that's what I'm uh, holding against the glass it's not flush completely but it's it's doing the job that's all that matters oh uh, how many years uh i will say about eight years <laughs> and out of those eight years like three doing it the right way or finding my way to do it the right way make a lot of mistakes brother a lot of mistakes but that's how you learn you know <laughs> I didn't want a year. Yeah, all right. No, no, I made a lot of mistakes. Um, but all I can say is, well, this is what I do. I don't say you do it or other people do it. Just what I do. Ever since I, I, I found Kaltwasser and ever since I found that everything being doing good you know just know what you're doing with it and and test your alkalinity daily that's what I do if I got on water change every Saturday feed the same amount all day I mean every day and everything look good after that everything will start thriving it's just stability that will create stability there you go Marvin Oh, look at, I don't know, I know it's probably hard for you guys to see it, but look how many copal pots in the glass, man. I wish you guys can see this. Uh, good lighting. To improve the color, good lighting, I'm using and feeding uh, oyster feeds and reef roids and with fuel. So, Seekem, no, Aqua Vitro fuel, uh, reef roids and oyster feeds by reef nutrition yeah try it man try it. just be careful with it you know uh, i mean i don't use the recommended doses they they recommend in the cold water what i do i use five gallons to those five gallons now of course i got a little bit more coral than when i started using it or what they were demanding and I was using just three scoops or teaspoons, excuse me, three teaspoons to the five gallons. And I was using that in my RO as a RO for the tank. Re replace the, the evaporation, the water evaporating. And ever since I started doing that, it's been working, man. Light, they start at 11.30 in the morning and they go off about 11.30 at night. And like uh, other settings they ramp they they start low they go high and then they go back down like the whites or the the high one when it's at the peak it only go for like four or five hours so that's all all the lights working together yeah patience definitely patience <laughs> and there are the pests yeah yeah, I mean, it, it just, it just don't change what you do, you know. I, like I say, I always do the same thing over and over. I do, like any other reefer, you know, watch videos and then you start tweaking with your tank and trying to make changes. But it just when you do it, 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 it change in whatever you're doing, just wait. Give it about a month, two months, and, and see what, what's going to happen. And what I'm doing now, like those five gallon water changes, I never used to do water changes. And those five gallons now, trust me, <laughs> I won't stop doing water changes now because I see the results. At the beginning, I used to do one water change. I wanted to see results. And no, that's not how it works. Do your water changes, feed the same amount every time. Um, all I test is alkalinity. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, yeah, check your nutrients, your, your nitrates and your phosphates when I don't test for it. You know, we all do things different. So ever since I started feeding the same amount, um, 
everything has been thriving. I, I will say the bacteria in, in living in all the biobacteria in there is doing what it needs to do with the same, with the amount of food that I'm feeding the tank or the amount of waste I'm producing in the tank. Uh, using the skimmer, a refugium to take care of that bio load. You know, in this tank, I got four fishes in here, two firefish. This little guy right here, that's a basilic, kind of like the royal grama, and the mandarin. <laughs> yep, you're welcome. Thank you, bro. And over here, I got I got a lot of fish. You could say for the size tank, it's a forty breeder, but. They're all nano fish and nothing. I mean, the biggest one will be this one here. And this one I had him says he was like a quarter size. The little tank is it's a 14 gallon in size. I oh, you got me there. Let me see. Um, this is 12 inches, about 14, 15 inches. Yeah, about 15 inches all around. Yeah, bro, water change has been working for me, man. You know, I'm I'm using resi salt right here. This is the bucket that I use. And when I mix it, I mix it like marine fish. That's the mix that I use so I can control the alkalinity. Um, I don't mix it to, you know, I got an SPS tank now, but uh, salinity, they say 35 part per million, which I never understand, part per million, and milli for million, I never pay, that's too much info, you leave that for the scientists, we just reefers, <laughs> I, I hear people talking about part per million, million per million, per billion, man, leave that to the science, don't make it, don't make it more complicated than what it is, it was 6.1, uh, BRS has, uh, I think it's like a, a like a chart or, or or a calculator or something that you use to to see how much you need to dose. But if you want to bring it up, you know whatever number they give you, don't do it in, in one shot. Just split it and do it if you want to do it daily, every other day. Yeah, yeah, one point two six. Okay, yeah, you see. That's, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm way away from that, because I, I keep the tank at 1.025, so, salinity, so that's probably why it makes like that, that makes sense, you see, <laughs> you leave that for the pro, no, but it's a lot of things, you know, that, that we start hearing, like, the pros talking, part per million, this and that, this and that, and us are newbies, or whoever is coming in the hobby, is is overwhelming so you know just try to try to get the info as close as you can that you can understand and and, and run with it reef Q, what's going on yeah my light just came on over there so now you guys can see my shadow is it's growing uh it's going crazy growing is everywhere now Um, the filter is the Orphic. The best one out there for me so far. I mean, I never tried the other ones. I can say it's the best out of the other ones. But the ones that I had tried, I had one that was like Chinese made. It was um, acrylic, I think they made off. This one's made out of glass, so it's way, way better. And, uh, and the app is Streamlabs. Sim easy to use. Oh, thank you, Bonero. Thank you for subscribing. But yeah, man, if you're new in the hobby, man, don't you know? If if you're in the in the in the stage of watching videos and learning, and just find your guy, find one that you could that you see. Always look at the tank. If the tank look good, then you can follow their advice. But some are in there just, you know, to give wrong information. Some are in there to get the right information. The information I'm going to give you is what I do with my tank. 
is now you know you know i can show you exactly everything that i everything that i do with my tank my temperature i run it in 76 i try to keep it at 76 but this summer was crazy like this one here says 77.4 but then you come over here which i got one it says 76.8 so it's around there you know 77 76 I mean, they were using the kitchen earlier, so they were using the oven, so it went high. Yeah, man, and if you have the Hannah, man, use it. <laughs> I got I got reagents for days, man. That's something that I test every day. I try to keep my alkalinity. Like I say, cold water, if, if you don't... If you find the two part too complicated, just use cold water, man. That's the best way to go. And I got three different cold water. Uh, my boy, Mr. DKH, he he, I gave him some coral, you know, and he gave me a bag from BRS cold water. Then I have um, Seekin cold water, which is the first one that I started using, and I haven't changed it, even though I got the other ones, and. Uh, Brightwell Aquatics um, Cod Plus Two, and and I haven't tried that that one only with the magnesium because that one the plus two is because it has mag magnesium in it. Mostly the cold water is calcium and, and, and alkalinity, and mix it together. So the magnesium one I only put a scoop every month when or every time or every four buckets that I do that I need to make. Um, uh, the uh, the four one I I use one scoop of the magnesium one, just in case you know it just in case. But if I see any changes in, in the coral behavior, then I I, I don't use it. Cause every time I use that magnesium one, I notice especially here the Akins, they not all open like they are right now. Every time I use the magnesium, the one is closed and. The rest is open, or three are closed, and the rest is open. So that's something that I consider every time I use that one. I, bro, you will be a fan of cock. I'm a, I'm gonna convert you into a cock geek. You see? Yeah, man. Uh, like I said, just try um, to start. You know, the easiest one that I, well, not the easiest one, because the first one that I bought, and, and, I, and I saw results uh, right away, is the, the Seekin one. It's affordable, it's nice, and uh, easy to mix. Like, the, this other one, like the one from BRS, though, I don't know, because a lot of cut water people use as a drip. Like I said, I use it in my ATO, so all that in there is cut water mixed with RO water. And you can see in the bottom, all that dust collecting in the bottom already. So it's time for me to clean it already. And that's happening because I increased the the doses in my mixing. That's my bucket over there where I keep my cold water mix. I got a mess here, man. Look at this. A mess there. I was cutting some wood. Got a mess of cables, drills, everything. <laughs> Every time I'm trying to do some DIY stuff, man, this is what happened. A mess everywhere. No need to make the mess, but I still make a mess. But yeah, Bright, Bright Wheels, like I said, the one I got from Bright Wheels is the Cult Plus 2. So if you can get just the one that don't have the magnesium in it and just do the water changes to replace the magnesium, you'll be good. It's like I say, start with three scoops. If you don't have that much coral, then only two. Uh, you don't need too much. And if you want to use it in your RO um, container. Um, a lot of people don't suggest it like that. They just suggest do like a drip system. But that's too much. That's too much for me. Um, cut was eventually in, in, in your airline tubing. Eventually it's going to clog it. So if one day it stopped because it got clogged, that's at least the pump in there is pushing it out, out of the container. When you do a drip system, 
I mean, you could dose it too. That's another way that you could do it. But I try to keep it as simple as possible, man. Benny, what's going on? Like, I got a doser and I still don't know how to use a doser and I don't want to know, not yet. If I ever use a doser, it's to dose fuel or aminos in the tank. That's what fuel is, aminos. That's the only thing I will use a doser for. Because I don't mind, let's say, if the doser just want to dump all those aminos in there, I don't mind the tank getting... I don't think you could, how you say, you could overdose the tank with aminos and, and something major happen. You just do a water change and put, you're good to go. Plus, it's good for the corals, you know. But when you use a doser for calcium and alkalinity and it malfunction and dose all that to the tank, you can have a tank crash, boom, in no time. So... That's why I, I I see so many people that have been through that or seen videos that people have been through that and mm -mm. so much time invested. It's not about uh, corals, you can always replace them, you know. You, of course, you got attached to them, but uh, you can always replace them. But the time that you invest in to get something to look like this, <laughs> you can get that time back. You have to start all over again and wait all over again. Even though for a lot of people this tank might look like it's it's been set up for years. No. This this tank is coral that I've been growing. You just gotta know where to place them. And I think the newest thing here was this rock that I started with frags. And then it just blew. It started blooming. So but if you look back at some YouTube videos I did on this tank, I don't think it's a year old. You know, now the rock in the tank has been wet for a lot of years. Because I had a 27 gallons. Um, matter of fact, well, when I came back to the hobby, because I started in a 75, then that tank stayed in Maryland down there. When I came back in the hobby, I started with a 55. So those rocks used to be in the 55, and that's what, like six, seven years ago already? So they've been wet for, for a long time. Yeah, yeah, some SPS up here. Purple Stylo, a Monty Cap, uh, what is a uh, Pasalopora, some Burnness, a uh, Meteor Shower, and the yellow one, I don't know exactly the name of it. Um, and that one is considered a SPS, you know, not, not, nothing fancy, no acro, no nothing, but good looking corals, you know, once they grow and they be colony, they look good. So yeah, man. Yeah. Put them in. Once you put them together, man, they just look gorgeous together and you get color morph in them right now. Look, the, the one that has the orange on it. No, it's hiding in there. And that black part right there. But it's crazy. Because this rock, when I when I set it up, it was only two colonies. Then I added the other ones, and it just looked like that. This one is his own rock. With canister filter, I, I never ran... Well, I did ran my first one but i didn't know what i was doing so with a canister filter go look at reef girl she's running her tank now with two canister filter and, and the tank is doing great the tank is doing great you know it just it just your your maintenance on it you know because they collect a lot of detritus the canister collect a lot of detritus as long as you every time you do a water change just open that canister rinse the sponges and all that and i think you'll be good to go you don't have to do it weekly. You can do it monthly. You know? But just make sure you never forget to do that. That way you don't create a nitrate factory. But I think you can be successful even with a hang on back filter. When I started this tank, like I say, if you look at it, it was a seven, seven and a half gallons. Um, it didn't look like this, of course, but I was using with a hang on back filter. It was the uh, uh, hang on back filter with a UV on it. And with a surface skimming. And it was doing great. It was doing great. I, I, 
as long as you you keep your maintenance and and do what you do to it, you know, you'll be okay, man. Current orbit. That's the uh, the the filtration, the canister. I know current orbit. They make waymakers lights. But yeah, man, like you could be successful with, with even I think even with no filter, with a with a hang on skimmer, you could have success. Like when I had my frac tank, it was no filtration in it. <laughs> Like you, and basically all this was in there, and no lie, was no filtration in it. All the fil all, all I had was a filter cup with filter flaws in there, and that's it, that's it. And all the squirrels that you see here, all the zoas, all that was in there. Like, look at the um, my videos. I got the video on Frankenstein. That was the name. But I showed the filtration. I didn't have no filtration. Was nothing, nothing. All I had in the filter was more corals. <laughs> but you just gotta watch out how much you feed. Um, let the let the fish eat. Let the corals eat. You know, if if you feed the tank, turn off the filter. Let the waymakers, you know, let the corals eat. Uh, like keep it off for like an hour if you if you can't. In an hour, nothing's gonna happen to the filtration. Once an hour go by, you're gonna see that anything that you put in this is gonna clear. And once it clears, turn it back on. If you want to change your sponges, you can do it. Yeah, man. Yeah, there you go. Like I say, like like that little uh, hang them back filter that I bought, that Greg Greg eight hundred. That little filter was working miracles. It, it was overkill for the size tank. It was a uh, uh, what is it? a seven and a half um, gallon with a like a forty. I, th I think it was like thirty to forty gallons the filter, <laughs> but it was doing the job. You know that's all it that matters. As long as it's doing the job, that's all it that matters. But no lie, mostly everything you see here, it was in the frac tank. Of course, I added some other stuff, but what was in the frag tank, that was in the frag tank. Uh, all this sauce was in the frag tank. That over there was in the frag tank. I think these were in the frag tank. The acros, some of them were in there. Um, I know the frosting was in there. Definitely that was in there. Um, the setosa was in there. Like mostly everything, mostly everything. Some stuff just came after, and it was no filtration in it. It was just water going down to the sun to a filter cup full of um, biomedia with uh, filter flaws, and that's it. <laughs> and that's it. I just made sure I changed that filter flaws after feeding. I just change it because anything get collected in there. If you leave it there, it's gonna decay. It's gonna create uh, nitrate spikes. Just remove it. You're good to go. You're good to go. Keep always try to keep polishing the water. But here now, I've never been a fan of skimmers. This is the ever like the second skimmer I ever owned in my life. So this time I'm using it just to see what results I get. In all those ten years, this is my second skimmer. I did have another one, some other ones, but I never waited to see this like what success you can have with a with a skimmer so i'm doing a couple things a little different how i used to do them and the biggest one the water changes the water changes am i seeing difference yes like a lot of growth this joint i had this for years and now it's growing it's it's getting crazy this joint right there it was two heads now it has like five Hold on, that's just sound like a, because they, they watching, my bad, my bad that I stopped the stream. Just making sure it's not the tow truck, because they doing um, street cleaning. But yeah, so, things are growing. That's all I can say, things are growing. Like my boy straight reefer, no, that coral there was almost dead in my 27 gardens. 
and I, and I think in the video I show everything I had going on in that tank because I had a lot of, like, a lot of things happened to that tank because I was using a hang on back overflow. So it got, it got, a snail went in there. My anemone that I had back then almost went in there. No, I don't, I don't, I use carbon in a reactor, yeah, but I don't do carbon dosing. Like, like I said, brother, all I do is those five gallon water change with that red sea salt. I, every other day or, yeah, every other day I siphon anything that gets collected. Now, this is my first time doing a bare bottom tank. Check out salinity every day. It's there. When I do water change, I do check my salinity. It's there. And cut water. I got a UV. This is my second UV that I ever own. It just just doing the same thing, man. Just keep doing what you do every day and don't change it. Like I said, you're gonna watch a lot of videos, and and the videos make you make changes quick. Like the other day, an example, me that I've been here for a lot of years, uh, but if I make changes, I make changes with with reefers that I trust. If I don't do, I, I'm just, I'm not just gonna watch any video and make changes. But the changes that I did, it just cause of flow. It was with the Ghanis. I saw Rift Builder video with the Ghanis. I said, okay, you know what? Let me put mines over here so I could, you know, they can open more and they definitely open it more. You know, just minor changes, nothing crazy. But when it comes to water chemistry, no. I, I just keep doing what I'm doing. It's been working and. I don't want to change it, man, because it's not fun when you have something and they just poosh, disappear, you know. I, and you're always going to lose coral. That's something that's always going to happen. No matter how stable the tank is, um, coral warfare or, or something, the coral wasn't happy no more and boop, decided to go bye-bye. <laughs> like, like my famous Walt Disney. It still got one pile of alive, so it's going to stay there until that one dies. Look at the beauty of that Walt Disney. Uh huh. But I still got that one polyp. I gotta feed the tank, and I'm gonna show you guys. Well, yeah, so you guys see what I feed. The same thing every day, man. And every stream, you guys see me doing it. But I, what I do in the streams is what I do every single day. So I got my oyster fees, and then I got my. Aquavitro fuel. So those two things. Let me see if I can work with one hand. So it's feeding time. I usually feed the, the tank around this time. So hold on. Let, let me find a spot. You see, because I got all the spot taken right now. I got a mess, man. I got to clean this. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Let's keep putting stuff in the floor. Excuse this stream, man. This is a mess. A mess, mess, mess. So, here's my cup where I do all the mixing. But, like I say, I feed this much because I got a lot of corals. And I only feed one tank. I let the other tank benefit from whatever is in the water column. So, that's five mils of that. And then... Let me see. Little more. There we go. Ten mils of that. The same thing every day. <laughs> Bro, you want to see over here? Nah, I don't want to show you the basement. The the landlords or the ex landlords are moving, and they got a mess down there. They do have a mess. So I got that in. Of course, refroids. This is good. Excuse me, I'm gonna put you guys down because I gotta use both hands to open this. So, refroids. Come here. Oh. Say that. Thank you. My soda. Then refroids, I just grab a pinch with my finger, just a pinch, mix it in there, and just close it. Look how much, the, oh my god, 
You guys didn't supposed to see that. They raped me. So that's it. And then just mix it, mix it, mix it. Then I put a little bit of tank water just so the temperature can drop on it. I don't blast the the corals with cold food. That's not good. So let me see. I put that there. Let's grab some water here. That's it. So that's my mixing. So it's a lot. It's a lot. It's about, you know, of course it got water now. It said like 30 mils with the water. <laughs> hey, bro, listen. When your corals don't have nothing to eat, and if that's the price that you got to pay, I will pay it. Eyes closed. Vaseline, no Vaseline. <laughs> as long as it's to keep the corals alive. So now I just mix it. And I'm going to test the alkalinity too while the filter is off. So now, turn off the return pump. Turn off the skimmer. The skimmer also stay off for skimmer off, boom, and then the return pumps. I mean the waymakers. I got a mess of cables. So why reefer doesn't have a mess of cables? Then remove this. So this is what I do every day. Today is the day that I'm working on on the lights, but I think that job gotta stop because. My brain is not working. So feed the fish. Get the fish away from what I'm going to feed the corals. But let me zoom in so you guys see the response on this coral when I feed them. Can you guys see that picture good? Alright. I'm trying to do everything. One hand. Keep the camera here. Then do this. And let just feed the coral. Oh. Really gentle, really gentle. Only for that one. He always get fat first. Always get fat first. Then look, the purple style is benefiting from that food. Then we do this one. Then we do this one. Then the one polyp. Then we do the garf. Then we do this one here. Yeah, I I feed a lot. I like to feed a lot. Look at all that cloud. <laughs> I don't know, am I missing anything? But yeah, man. This is what I do every day, man. I, I don't change it. I try to like keep doing the same thing over and over. And that creates stability. You know? I'm feeding the same amount, the corals the same amount. I only feed the SPS because they got the smaller polyps and the flow, whatever situation going on with that. I mean, I'm doing it now, target feeding, but I also do broca feeding, and, and they they also, you know, feed from that. Then once the power has come on, I keep the pump off, the return pump, and we go from there. But That, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. It's all cloudy now. It's almost oh, it's almost done. Now this one, then that one, then my little nub over here. 
a little nubby over here that broke off from the first acro that I fed. I got another one over here, a stack. What else need to get fed? Boom, that one. This one, this one. Oh, and the Montes. The Green Monty and that crazy mountain and then the rest I just put it to the um uh, to the power heads that's it that's it and then whatever I got left here no I gotta I gotta feed Marvin I haven't feed Marvin today all right so for Marvin I gotta disconnect this well let me try the the app let me see if I can make the app work today excuse me a second Let me see if the app is going to work today. Okay, shut it off. Nope, it's still on. Fucker. I don't know what's wrong with that power hit. I'm going to get it out of there and I'm going to throw it in the garbage. I turn it off and it's still on. Mother flower. Way feed. And look, FEMO is on zero. And it's still working. Still moving the water. Come on, man. Stop. Stop working. Oh, man. It's going to get me mad. Look. Look what I'm doing. Look. Flow rate. Zero. And the BS still working. Freaking piece of shit. Oh, excuse my language. All right, so where are you? Where are you connected? Let me just disconnect this. Excuse me, because Marvin need to eat. So my, even though I got plenty of cobalt pods inside the tank, my Mandarin being trained to eat brine shrimp, and he already knows Marvin. Here you go. Watch him. Watch him when you see the the. Come on. Look at that beauty. Look at. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it, puppy. Eat it. Well, before I used to have this fish as a logo in my channel. Now, you know, I thought I was fancy and put my name on it, but he eventually gonna come back to be my logo. I love Mandarin. Mandarin is my favorite fish. I can love other fish, but this one is my favorite. And the firefish also another of my favorite fish. But yeah, look at the ganis. The ganis are happy. Whatever type of gani is, cause now I got confused. Um, Jay Cotton made that video, now I'm all confused. Do I have flower pot? Do I have Ghania Pora? Do I have Aleva Pora? Do I have Bottle Pora? It's too many names now. You got me here counting on uh, every latch? No, man. I don't got time for that. Oh, yeah. Then I feed the fish, and that's it. All the fish is full, it's gone. Um,. Just a little bit more here for the flow. Want the flow come back on? I could throw it in here if I want to, but this tank is good. This tank is doing really, really good. I don't need no more. I, if if I feed it, I know I, the grow is gonna increase. And right now, I don't, I want to keep it right there. Right there is okay. You know, I don't want things to grow out of proportion, and then I gotta put my hands in there. And you just go crazy with the growth. Look at Marvin. Look at the beauty of this fish. Look at that. He's looking for a female. What? He's a beauty. He's a beauty. Every time I see this fish, I remember when the when the guy said, "Yo, I got a mandarin. He's almost dead." And I look at it now. I said, "Whoa! You see how long the 
the dorsal fin is. Now you guys can see it. Look at that dorsal fin. That's when you know he's an old head. It's huge. It's huge, huge, huge. Oh, you know what? Let's try something. Let me grab my mirror. Let's see if he don't get spooked. But let's see if he opened that dorsal fin. That'd be cool. Let's see if he don't get spooked. Let's try. Let's try. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there you go. There we go. Watch. Watch that dorsal fin. Look at that dorsal fin. That's what she said. <laughs> you see that dorsal fin? Look at that beauty, man. Hmm. He'd be like, hmm. Who's this guy over there? You guys can see him? Look at that. that. Look at that. Wow, what a beauty. There we go. Look at that spade. Now that's a mandarin. See that beauty? Why they do that? Look, Baba, territory. Look, look, look at him looking forward. Look at that. He's ready, Baba. He's ready. So that's aggression, you know? Just show that he's the, he's the male. Dominance. All right, let me put it like this. So you guys could appreciate that better. The behavior. Yeah, he, he's one of my favorite fish, man. But that's just the mouth too, you know? If, now he comes down. Look at that. How long does... Now he goes in the back. Hold up. The flow came back on. So now power has our own again. Let me But I keep the power heads on. I just throw this little bit of food right there. So it has a little bit of refroid. Now everything else is gonna benefit from that. It's cloudy, man. It's hard to see here in the video, but the tank is cloudy. Super super cloudy. You see, now he's in the corner looking for that other fish. Nah, man, it's not, it's not hard to keep. Like, they they finicky um, eaters, but they're not hard to keep. I mean, I had them the first time. I, I, bought, I bought my first Mandarin. Of course, I didn't know what I was doing, but once, like, how I trained them to eat brine shrimp, the first thing you got to do is when you get one, make sure it's healthy. It, it, like, it's not skinny. It's moving like that. It's searching for something in the tank. And if you got more fish in the tank, feed those fish first. And watch mostly because they most of the time hang out in the same spot. And always go to that spot and feed those brine shrimp in that spot. I feed them brine shrimp because they're more easy than the mice shrimp. And repeat the same thing every time you feed the tank. But if you're trying to get them to eat fast, like you got to do it by the hour. Of course, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be overwhelming the tank with a lot of food. But just do it like a pinch. Boom. Just throw it in the corner and just wait. He's he going to go search for it. He's going to look at it. And eventually, he's going to start eating it. Every time I do that, it always works. Mm. Yeah, like I say, if if he wasn't moving when you got him, I because we see them in the store and they look beautiful. But if the fish is, is still it's not doing nothing, like they gotta be active, searching for something. Unless the fish was sick, that's the only way. But like I say, this one came to me almost dead. It was getting picked on by a clownfish, beat him up. All the fins was all messed up. Like every 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 fin, the back fin, the side ones, they look like, make it look like a butterfly. Everything was messed up. 
But now, look, he's looking now for, for that mirror. <laughs> All right, you want to fight? That's what it is. Hey, no we're running it right there. Your nemesis is right there. There you go. There you go. Now look at the beauty of that fish. Like I say, I mean, when when the guy brought it to, to me, he would just still in one spot. But what I did, all right, if he eats, he got a chance to survive. And he ate. The minute I saw him picking on one brine shrimp, I kept feeding the same spot. And eventually, this is what I, I end up with. Yeah, he was, man. He was. My boy, yeah, my boy out here got one that eats pellets. You know, that, like right now, I said right now, those are the best ones to get. Um, the little tiny one, they're more expensive, but they tank race, so they easy to keep. They really tiny, though. They be as small as this hermit crab compared to that mandarin right there. You know, but... You you learn to appreciate it more, you know, because you watch it grow from a little tiny thing to a beauty like this. Yeah, yeah, I have my clownfish and my damsels. But, you know, the eggs or the baby fish, they like they they can stand a system. Like, you got to have a breeding set up for that. But they, they start spawning, man. Like, once the tank is stable and all that. And it's cool because you see their behavior. It, like, an example, the damsel, they chase each other. Um, you know, they play around. You know, they go through the crevices or the cave and all that. It's cool. It's cool to watch watch them just play around and, and start spawning. I think that's what's happening in my tank now. Right now, they're not getting along. Today, I think they're mad at each other. But they chase each other. Now, I think I think in damsels, also, the female is bigger than the male. So I would think this is my female. And that's the male over there. He's tiny. He always been the tiniest one. And when I bought them, I bought, I bought like five, I think it was. Five or six. One, I crushed one with a rock. Um, sadly, one jumped out of the tank, and two of them, I think, got killed by that big female. Yeah, man, I had killed some fish by accident, man. It's, it happens. Look at this guy, he pooped the whole corner. It's okay, all right, all right, enough. That's it, enough. I don't want you to have a heart attack. He's gone. You see? He's gone. He's gone. Go to the back. Go. Go. Go in the back. Go. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Don't mind me. I'll be talking to my fish. Look, he's coming for more. He's gone, bro. He's gone. Go, go. No more. My hand. Look, it's only my hand. Yeah, now he's going to be there for a while looking for that fish. He got he, he got his his Look, he's even pooping like crazy now. <laughs> Say this is my spot. You ain't coming in here. And of course, the firefish eating the poop. <laughs> Nasty. But that's coral food. That's free coral food. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I did have um, seahorse, especially in this tank. But it looked different. Like, this was my main rock in that tank. So the seahorse used to be in that Gorgonian. But I did make a mistake. I did make a mistake. Um, I increased the flow that night on the pump, and that created a bigger siphon on the overflow, and they got caught on the overflow. 
One got caught first, the other one went to the rescue and got caught also, so they, they died from stress. When I came home that afternoon, I came home to a dead seahorse. Sad, it was a sad scenario. But can you keep on a reef tank? Yeah, you can. They come from the Caribbean, so I don't see why not. You find seahorse in reef. So, but then again, you know, they in a closed environment, so why they say they need a tank with low flow and all that? Because, of course, it's, it's, it's a square tank, so they're going to hit the soul with, with, if you got a strong flow. Yeah, you have to, man. Yeah, I had the tank with no pot. I think it was only the uh, the hang on back filter. Especially when I started the setup with the nanos. With the same and a half, that's what I had in there. I had the firefish, I had a seahorse. Then I bought a second seahorse. And they were doing good, man. They were doing good. But once I added that freaking overflow, I didn't cover the overflow and boop. Yeah, they do like cooler waters, yeah. But, you know, then again, you know, then again, okay, they like cool, cooler water, right? But then again, a lot of videos in the wild, seahorses are filmed in places where there's a lot of seagrass. And when there's a lot of seagrass, it's shallow water. And when it's shallow water, it's higher temperatures. So, it's crazy. And that's why I say they come from the ocean, man. It don't get wilder than that. You know, it's just in a, in a glass box, of course. You know, you got to be careful because... You got power heads in there. You got the overflow pulling water in. So that's exactly what killed mines. If not, I, I bet you I would have had them right now. I would have had them right now. Because they were doing fine. I trained them to eat brine shrimp. That's the only thing. Of course, you got to be paying more attention because they, they eat and poop at the same time. So if not, they get skinny quick. But I always say that, man, you know, it's a lot of info out there. Of course, you know, they got people out there doing the research, whatever, whatever. But sometimes some things don't make sense, you know. Sometimes I, th I think about it, I say, damn, but they don't like that much flow, but they come from the ocean. And the water is more crazy in the shores than inside the ocean where it's deep. So you, it's like kind of, you know, who's saying the truth, <laughs> But then again, they the expert, we not, you know, so. But I think all the, all the things they say about the tank is just because it's, it's a close environment for them, you know. Powerheads is some mechanical equipment that is, you know, they get in there, they're going to get chop chop. <laughs> so, but yeah, so now I just sit here for a while, you know. Every time the pump, I like I gotta put down on a on a on a Wi-Fi controller, um, so I could just turn it off for an hour and then let it um, come back on. But right now it's only for ten minutes, so every time I turn it back on, I just turn it off and I'm just letting the corals eat. Yep. Well, in my case is different. They never happy. <laughs> But I just let the corals eat. I start setting everything back up. Put this so no jumpers jump out of the tank. This is another thing I got to do. So I know you've probably seen this system before or if you watched the video before. So this is a whole DIY system. It's a 40 breeder. Just your typical 40, 40 breeder. I just removed the trim out of here. I did it like Euro brace. Went to a glass company, I told them how long I want them and how thick. They cut it for me. They smoothed the, the they smoothed the, the edges really nice. F to be my first time doing silicone work, so I think I did a pretty good job. <laughs> Even though the only part I don't like is this one right here, because I, I never seen nobody do those. So I don't know how they connect those parts. So I should have used, next time in this part, I will use clear um silicone so that way it don't show that much but yeah that's a diy 40 gallon breeder stand it's just your typical 40 gallon breeder stand but i just extended it um all i did i run a long screw from here to this one 
and that's how it's attached but then I also secure this a little more just in case the weight but also got this wood here this plywood so I don't the pressure be even then my crazy plumbing you know I got two returns overflow in the middle so those are my two drains right there from this tank then the two returns this one goes up and then split in two back here one and one then the bottom one it just come here and feed this tank and that's my drain for the other one just come through here and overflow here i use filter cups the black filter cups a little bit of the tritus there that i gotta clean of course that's my refugium area i'm using for carbon i'm using aqua shark um so far i mean I don't know what I know the purpose of carbon accordingly to science and reefers is to remove um, like colors out of the water, like any tints out of the water and any medicine and pollutant out of the water. So if that's what it's doing, great job because <laughs> I don't know. But the skimmer, of course, all the poop, all the extra nastiness in the water it will get removed by the skimmer and that's how I, I guess i keep my balance with the nitrates and all that my biomedia block i got that one i also got more back here my first biomedia block that i bought like five years ago seven years ago so i cut it in pieces and i put it there it was bigger but all the pieces got in all the people's tank so shado uh, Kalarpa, Feather Kalarpa, those little leafy ones, I don't know what they are. Uh, the grape ones also. I don't know how. Ooh, I gotta check the battery. I haven't checked the battery. Hold on. I'm gonna leave you guys hanging like always. And I bet you I got like 1%. <laughs> but we are connected again. Let me see. Let me check the battery. Let me see if I can see what's my battery. Anyway, you guys are connected again anyway. But yeah, so... Yeah, man. Like I said, this is my first time. Um, going all out with the skimmer. Going all out with a reactor. Going all out with a UV. Um, I, like before, man. Before, I didn't do no water changes. I used to overfeed the tank. Everything was doing good. But when something did went wrong, it went wrong. When things started dying, they started, like, not dying, but mostly I was keeping um, softy, like, zoas and stuff like that. So, once they started dying, Drama D, my brother. I am thinking to buy Kate Aquarium from Augie Barn to Augie from 55 gallon Miss Reef Tank. Oh, wow, nice, nice. Yeah, man, like, like I say, like, the, the best thing I found, just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't overwhelm yourself. With, you know, it's, it's always good to get ideas from others. It's always good. But if you're doing something that is working for you, just keep doing that. And eventually, you're going to and be creative, you know, when it comes to aquascape, when it comes to coral placement, you know, just be creative. Like... When I started placing corals in here, I wasn't looking, okay, I'm going to place, like, for real. And I'm talking for real. When I place corals, like, no light, I'm not going for colors. But somehow, every time I place a coral, it's kind of like I, I place it in the right spot, I would say, or the, the spot that I was thinking to put it on, it was the right spot for that coral. And then the color rainbow thing, whatever goes on in there, it just looked good. Oh, yes, it is addictive, man. It is addictive. I'm staying away from all the stores, man. I don't want to know nothing. I don't want to know nothing. Right now, like I said, I'm just focusing on what I'm doing and see if I'm getting results. And I am getting results. So for now, I'm going to stay away. I don't need no new corals right now. 
the other day, you know, I hook up a friend of mine because his coral died due to the up power outage and the storms and stuff that has been going on. So I give him, I give him a couple, you know, and I still got more that I can frag and, and give to other people. But right now I'm just letting things grow or overgrow and then we just keep giving away and I don't like selling nothing. I just, you know, they grow fast. Once, once you, you got everything going the way it's supposed to, things will just start growing and Sometimes you throw things even in the garbage. It's sad to say, but it happens. <laughs> I know, brother. I know. I know that. Bronx Reefer, what's going on? Thank you. Thank you. Trying, brother. Trying, trying, trying. This one, I always show this one because it's mostly a complete reef. This one is 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 growing now. But eventually it's going to look... Not like this, but, you know, it's going to have its own look. Hopefully. Earlier today, I was blowing the rocks, just cleaning all the detritus. I don't know if that's a torch or whatever that coral is, but some of the tips, they just went flying. The little bubbles. I know it's some type of euphelia. I don't think it's a torch, but it's some type of euphelia that look like a torch. It's a fake torch, probably. Straight reefer. But things are doing great, man. Can't complain. Can't complain. Can't complain at all. Some things that I that I want them to grow faster, those are the things that I'm not seeing grow faster. Like I love clove polyps. I got something with those that I love them. I just love the the looks of it, the way it grows, the colors. I saw somebody posted a picture the other day that is so many kinds of club palo with different colors. So I'm going to try to get my hands on some of those. But I would love the back of this tank just get full of those. I don't care if I overgrow the rocks. I don't care. I just like them. That's one thing that I like. Like the GSP, people don't like them. I like them. I like them. It's a, you know, it's a great beginner coral and it's a great killer coral that will kill all the corals and... I like them. I like them. The Ghanis, they're doing better here. And now they're not getting blasted. Look at this one. This one don't even open. It's getting blasted. That hammer, I'm going to move it out of there also. I'm thinking to put it here next to this frog spawn. So I have that cover also that, but I gotta find a way to put it there. Pump came back on one more time. That'll be like 30 minutes, 40 minutes has been off. No, like 30 minutes now. Once it turned back on, boom, that's it. Then just clean up here. Um, I just give it like on uh, like an hour to like a full hour for so then I can turn on the skimmer and we good to go. That's it, man. Oh, I gotta fill that up. It's almost empty. Tomorrow I'm gonna have a long day at work, so I know by the morning probably won't evaporate completely. Or I mean, yeah, probably the water won't evaporate so to empty all that out, but. Oh, you know what, guys? Alkalinity test. Yes, yes, I almost forgot that. All right, I'm going to put you guys in the tripod. All right, guess your numbers now. Guess your numbers. Calling once, calling twice. Guess your alkalinity numbers now. All right, I start first. I will say my tank is 8.4. Four. <laughs> that low drop with the room. Nah, it's 8.4. 8.4 in the dot. 8.2. 8.8. Oh. Oh. Maybe it's up there. Last time, I say 8.4 because last time it was 8.5. Before that one was 8.7. So. 
Let me make sure I got enough water in here. So I'm doing the water first, making sure it's right on the line. The last time I, I did the test wrong, I think one more drop. Boop. That's good enough. All right, so let me let me face it over here. I don't know you guys, 8.8. .8. Anybody else want to guess the number of alkalinity tonight? Anybody? Call me once, call me twice. Did I test today? Did I test today? Insane. Did I test today? When I was talking? No. No, not today. You see, I'm going crazy. My job is driving me naughty. Naughty, naughty. Alright. Alright, let's put that there. Let's cycle it. Boop. Always shake the bio, I mean the, the agent. All right, let me clean the bottle. Let me put this here. This is where I got my other stuff. My other bottle in case the first test, I do it wrong. So let's put that there. Boom. Boom, let's clear that out. Don't you guys hate when you press to do the second one and that just stay just, um, how do you say, buffering? <laughs> I hate that. You'll be like, you look a minute later and still buffering. By the color. All right, let's see, 8.2. Alright, we'll see. We'll see. I got the rea in my hand. Da, 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 da. Let's put it in there. One mil. One mil. They say how many times they say for you guys to shake it? I always shake it eight times just to make sure I grab everything in there. So one, two, three, four. And then I clean it. I'm not cheating. I just if you say 8.1, all right, 8.4, I said, and ba 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 bum, 8.0. Ha ha ha. Reef Q is closer again, and Straight Reefer got it. 8.0. That's good. You see, that car washer thing is working, man. I don't get, like I said, the highest I got it was 8.7. It, it was because sometimes your boy want to see some more growth and I dose this. Five mils. Sometimes. Every time I dose this, I, I see the tips growing. I don't know why. Not the same the next day, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Like the week later. One day I'm gonna, you know, when I do my 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 official giveaway, I'm gonna do it like that. Whoever gets the number, well, probably not, cause probably too many people get the the same number, right? But between us, you know, I could do it between us. Do some Zoe and I Zoe's giveaway. I mean, that's all I could give right now. Once I get the SPS, and if you guys like them. You know, we could do a SPS, we could do a Euphelia. One of the, these Euphelias grow a little more. The Akins, I'm sorry, but the Akins, mm -mm -mm. that's something that I don't dare to frag. I don't mind doing it, but I don't dare to do it. I leave that for the experts. I buy the single heads and then I grow them. But the Aiken, that's one thing that for me to frag an Aiken, whew. I just don't want to do a damage to a beauty like that, you know. So as they just, you know, easy to, to frag. But when, like when you get colony, they grow big like that and they encrust and they just big. Monty is a different thing because you could just snap a little piece of it. Like Euphelia, you could cut a head, you'll be good. But when you get something like that, they just keep growing and growing and growing. It just, it just crazy. Yeah, man, rest, rest. 
Good night. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for chatting with me earlier. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you. But yeah, that's that's one coral that I don't dare to to frag. I will frag anything else. Anything else. Same thing. I I did a video fragging the gorgonians and peeling off the skin. That that ah. Uh. Then I was take after I did the video and learned how to do it. I was thinking about. It. I say, wow, you know. We don't feel the pain. They do. So I don't know. <laughs> Look at the Mandarin. He's still looking for, for the intruder. Dito. No, I got him. No, he, he's, he's just going to be cruising. He's saying, hmm. Where this, where this asshole at? Excuse my language. Oh, my dumbass throw that thing in here. Where I put the... Okay. So, yeah. But yeah, so those are the plans for now. I mean, the other situation that I had here in the house, I didn't know what to do because I don't know if we're going to move or blah, 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 blah. Supposedly the new owner... They don't want people to go, they want us to stay, blah, 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 but you know how they are, new owners. Yeah, man, good night, brother. Thank you for coming through anytime. I try to do the streams every Tuesday or Wednesday, so you're always welcome, brother. But yeah, so that situation is another situation that uh, we just deal with it as it comes. I don't want to, you know, get comfortable and then something happened, blah, blah. And But right now that everything is doing good, oh, the Orphrex are off. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah, my Orphrex go out at 10 o'clock. Then the air prime start dimming down. This one turned off, by, excuse me, by 11.30. And you know what? Let me turn off the the room light like, because we don't need it no more I need it later when I clean that look better right yep that looks way better it's a little bit it looked cloudy because the, the glass is all that was the dirtiest to get in a week it don't get that dirty but if you look at the power heads look what is dirty only the tip this one is not even dirty. This tank is so stable. Or whatever is going on in there. This is so stable though. It's crazy. So now the return pump is on. Oops. Sorry guys. I got you guys going crazy. And then, then, then. So, how, how's everybody? I know it's too late to ask, you know, after you guys been here with me an hour and a half. <laughs> oh man, look at that. That's stuff from the from the plumbing. What exactly is that? I don't know. I guess some some type of sponge or I don't know what it is. It never bothered me when I see it. It will go down that way anyway. Oh, Salt Creek, is it? Oh. That one is big. That was the biggest one I've ever seen. But pretty soon will disappear. Go through the other flow. Oh. But you see a Mandarin now? He's just in that spot. He don't want to go nowhere. But yeah, so I don't know if I add those lights. We'll see. We'll see. That's what I'm planning to do. Just make... The only thing is, is like the pixies. You know, you got to control each, each and one of them. 
by, uh, by themselves unless you put two uh, of that driver or whatever it is you know the ones that you want to control with the same intensity or whatever but I don't know I don't know yet I don't know so far they're doing good but a little bit of more light in the size it won't be it won't hurt it won't hurt I just gotta find a way to mount them in, in the tank right now so far this is the idea I got so it goes from there boom come back to the front and then it just all three lights right there but I think it's gonna look ugly I don't know and then it's not gonna last for long because once I get the other stand I don't know we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see what we do it's too much too much they thought I still got that clown on there. I feel bad for him. But I did put him in the tank. Yes, I think it was yesterday. And he kept being aggressive. So I probably move him. Look, he got him pinched. Probably that's how he's going to end up dying. I mean. But anyway, guys. I got a lot of cleaning to do here. Thank you guys for being supporters, coming through. And I see you guys probably on another video I do. You know, I'm going to try to, like I always do, keep that English and Spanish video. Because some people always ask me for Spanish videos. So, if you at least can go by and just drop a like, I appreciate it. Or a dislike. I still appreciate it. I don't mind. <laughs> so... But I see you guys in the next one, all right? Thank you for being here. Have a good night. Whoever is in the other side of the world, have a great morning. And I see you guys in the next one. See you, Drummond D. Hasta la próxima. Your boy, Calizos out. See you guys.